Okay, welcome back. So, I actually, I don't even know why you're here, Jake. We're going to talk about another story I've written, and I should actually say I've only actually written like two stories this week. So, in many shameless ways, self-promotion. Yeah, no, no, shameless self-promotion. And it's one of those stories I instantly regretted um, because for the first time I got my hands dirty with the world of the Rexit row. Now, before I talk about the latest developments, Jake, for those poor people that are not familiar, talk us with, talk us through Rexit. And it goes without saying that Jake coined the term Rexit, but talk us through the Rexit row. Where, what happened previously in the last season of Rexit? What happened? Previously on the Australian Aviation Podcast. Um, but we, but we did talk about it on the podcast. Um, so that's accurate. Yes. Uh, so last year, this was uh, sort of mid last year. Um, Rex pulled out of Wyala in South Australia. This was after the council made the move to pass on the security these increases in security screening costs uh, at the airport to airlines. Um, Rex accused Wyala of favouring Qantas, um, which has uh, stepped in to, to fill the gap left behind by Rex. Um, the mayor of Wyala Council, uh, you know, Rex was saying, you know, they have a secret agenda in favour of Qantas. You know, they're um, they're 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 they're, they're favouring Qantas. Um, they're they they're in bed with Qantas. All of these things. Um, uh, Phil Stone, the mayor of Wyala Council, uh, said that uh, Rex was defaming the council. You know, uh, you know, using emotive statements to cast council in a defamatory manner, ignoring the facts of the situation. Um, he said, you know, we've, we we passed on the Federal Aviation Safety screening cost to air, both airlines evenly. Rex chose to exit without trying to implement the increased costs. Qantas has demonstrated its commitment to the Wyala community by maintaining and increasing its local services. There was a big argy-bargy over how much it would have cost to um, implement these, these, you know, these measures to show that, uh, to, to, to basically ensure that, that everyone was sort of screened equally. Um... Or that, uh, or that, or that, unscreened flights could continue to operate, and uh, basically the upshot of the of the situation is that there was a lot of um, bad air and bad blood on both sides. Um, shout out to anyone who went to the Taylor Swift Eras tour, uh, but there was a lot of bad blood between uh, Wyala Council and Rex. Uh, but Adam, why don't you tell us the latest twist in the saga? Just when you thought it was safe to go. <clears throat> Just when you thought it was safe to go back to Wyala. It is extraordinary, this twist. So basically, um, uh, the independent um, kind of, uh, the state's independent e economic regulator um, has basically said that the entire, um, actually, and I'm going to read this out. They basically said that the Rex's decision to put out of Wyala appears to have contributed to the entire council being declared economically unsustainable. Um, and they're basically their poor performance um, of the airport is the primary factor behind the council's debt, which will see it lose $5 million between 2023 and 2024 and 2032 and 33. Um, but it says here, when the airport's operation is excluded, the council would register a $1.3 million surplus over the same period. So effectively, Rex's decision to pull out of the airport has almost sunk the whole council or could potentially sink the whole council, which I think is absolutely extraordinary. Um, because obviously, as you said there before, Qantas has obviously uh, stepped in to take those flights, but you don't have the competition. You perhaps have like, higher airfares. You have it's a lot less profitable. So this is an extraordinary twist in the round. And what they're what they're effectively getting to is that the the kind of underlying problem was the federal government said it would stop funding um, security screening operations at these regional airports. Um, so they are basically asking there to be a national levy so that rather than these smaller airports being lumped with the cost, they're spread nationwide so it's a lot fairer for everybody. It does seem astonishing that they've not been able to sort this out because we've not, this has been what, like six months or so? It's been, it's been yeah. a good while. Yeah. And it does seem extraordinary that nobody's been able to sort this out, but it is an extraordinary twist um and another another twist uh this is uh probably unrelated to to rex but uh there was uh, at the time uh rex praised armadale um armadale airport in new south wales for its you know implementation of this whole uh 
of, of, of screening procedures that, mm. that Rex deemed suitable, um, you know, terminal upgrades that, that Rex approved of. Um, fast forward a few months, Rex was suspending its services to Armadale uh, due to um, you know supply and 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 and, and staffing issues. Um, I don't remember if we talked about it on the on the podcast, but uh, Adam Marshall, the uh, the 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 MP. Um, for uh, for the the Armadale region um, was uh, was was questioning why Rex uh, was not returning to Armadale when it said it might, um, and uh, that that Armadale MP got into a spat with 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 Rex as well um, about you know uh, when Rex was or was not coming back with Rex saying you know oh well your antics are going to be putting you last on Armadale last on the list for us coming back mark our words um, now again. This is probably unrelated to Rex, uh, but Adam Marshall has announced that he is resigning as the uh, as the MP for the Northern Tablelands. Um, so, who's to say? Um, perhaps he uh, it, it, his press release uh, seemed to indicate that he just felt it was it was time to go. He has been in politics for for, for twenty years, um, but that is that is another that is another. Uh, Sort of political figure that uh, that that Rex has has kind of outlasted in these in these airport spats. Forget the Dread Enoch. Who you do not want to mess with is Rex Airline because they will come. They will take you down. You'll you'll find a Saab three forty cockpit in your bed, <laughs> which which is uh, very large. Uh, mm. So you it would be hard to not notice them putting it in there. But somehow they manage. Well, talking about unfortunate costs, I'm finally going to throw over to you to talk about a story. And it is about a place you have said, you've previously said um, that heaven is a place on earth and heaven is the Gold Coast. So tell us the latest about your favourite, your favourite place. Well, uh, you know, as uh, I, I'm, I'm sure the, the Gold Coast is quite a lovely pl- place. Um, you know, I understand people do go there sometimes. Uh, but this is relating to, this is something that just came up uh, today for us. Um, the Gold Coast uh, is is... Has been building a light rail system uh, for a few years now. There's, there's the first two stages that are up and running. Stage four, uh, so stage three is currently under construction. Stage four is in the pipeline, which would connect the end of that that light rail system uh, down to Burley Heads via the airport. So Burley Heads to Coolangatta via the airport. Um, now this. 13 kilometer stretch of the light rail was previously estimated at 2.7 billion dollars but according to a story um I believe today at the time of at, at the time of recording uh, a story in the Gold Coast Bulletin um that is no longer the the case it, it is expected to the upper range of the cost is now 7.6 billion dollars so Bart Mellish who was the transport minister in in Queensland said that there is a, an estimated cost of 4.4 billion cost range at 3.1 billion to 7.6 billion which is a bit of a lift shall we say from 2.7 this is uh, what uh, this is a probably not an appropriate rant for this show. But what I don't understand is why is it the case that trains? I know this is like a light rail, but they are all similar forms of a. It's same like thing. a tram. It's, it's a like tram. a tram. Why does this stuff cost so much money? Basically, is how you do it. You dig up a road a little bit. You put in some tracks. Put a train on it. Done. How on earth? Queens, so- uh, Mr. Mellish, if you're listening, we have a consultant right here. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, so, so also it's only thirteen kilometers, kilometers, which in in real measurement is like, like seven miles, not particularly far. How can seven miles of light rail, not even a real rail, a light rail, cost seven point six billion dollars? That is absurd. Well, apparently, according to uh, the minister, um, the biggest cost here would be bridges over uh, uh, the Talabudgera and Corumban creeks. Um, so so they'd need to build some bridges for mm. the light rail. They, they wouldn't just be putting the light rail on the on the bridges that are already there. So bridges are probably the most expensive. But I mean, we've, we've seen how expensive bridges can be, um, you know, up in Baltimore when that big tanker ship crashed into one. Um, so, you know, bridges are, are, are not to be sneezed at in terms of costs. That's that's going to cost Baltimore a pretty penny. And so putting up bridges over these creeks is probably going to cost, um, you know, the, the light rail project uh, a fair bit of money. But what I would say as well, and I don't want to be horrible to any individual, but the the person that previously estimated it at $2.7 billion, that person's a buck. Because it's not like this person's got it a little bit wrong. 
It does seem this person's got it radically wrong. Did they not factor in the bridges? Look, in fairness... Oh, Derek, in you, fairness, you didn't look about building the bridges? Oh, don't worry about that. Do it later. In, 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 in fairness, you know, uh, transport project budget blowouts are not uncommon. No, that is I mean, true. look at, you know, look at Sydney Metro, look at, you know, Melbourne Airport Rail Link, look at all these. Uh, the, fi- show me a transport project without a massive budget blowout um, and I will show you... Uh, a transport project without a massive budget blowout. That's very true. That's very true. Anyway, I don't understand it. Um, I do hope this eventually happens, though, because the good people of the Gold Coast deserve the very best transport links. Both of them. Don't be horrible about the Gold Coast. We love a Gold Coast. What is wrong with it? Just be, just be nice to these people. 